Most people pick duelists with dreams of pulling off stuff like this. My map. But for 99% of the duelist players out there, the reality is a lot more like this. Everyone wants to play Duelist, and yet so few people are actually good at the role, myself included. It seems so simple, just run in and shoot, right? Way easier than having to try and use utility to support your no-com AI teammates, right? Then why do so many people suck at the Duelist role? Are we all just misunderstanding how to play Duelist correctly? Do we lack the aim and mechanics to impact the game at a high level? Is there any hope for players like me who just want to play Raze or Jet once every 200 games of filling the smokes roll without trolling my entire team and throwing the game? Lucky for those of us with dreams of Duelist domination, one of the best Duelist players in the world decided to write a guide to the role on Twitter, during a tournament that he was busy winning, by the way. Durka is the main duelist for Fnatic and has probably been the most consistent and high-impact duelist player in the entire world since joining the team in 2021. It doesn't seem to matter what agent he's put on, Rays, Jet, or Chamber, Durka puts up such good stats that he must be doing something right. So let's go through his guide and see if we can take our duelist game to the next level. The main job as a duelist is to create space for your team and seek advantages and early picks to make life easier for your team, which requires some individual skill and mechanics. Okay, so this is pretty close to what Riot defines the role as in the game client, but I think this part, make life easier for your team, is the real key takeaway. I think most people probably think the main way a duelist can make the game easier for the team is by killing the five players on the other team every round. In reality, there's a lot of really hard stuff to do in Valorant, and some of it is only possible as a duelist. Breaking through a defensive setup by dashing through a choke point without knowing where any enemies are is something that really only a duelist can do. Simply forcing enemy eyes away and utility away from the choke point long enough for your team to burst through is more than worth trading your life. Kills are only a bonus in this case. Just look at Durka's stats on Ascent, where he died first a ton on attack, but his team won the map every time. The next time I play Duelist, I'm going to try to think of every round as how do I do the hardest thing for my team this round, or how do I make this round as easy as possible to play for my team, instead of how do I get the most kills to climb the scoreboard. Moving on to point number one, get to know your agents. Okay, simple enough so far. Learn abilities and limits on them, running on a custom server alone, just bouncing nades off the walls and learning satchels or jet dash updraft will help you more than playing an extra game of ranked. You can also learn stuff for specific situations. Yeah, so this point is pretty obvious. You need to be fluid with how you move your agent and use your utility. I've seen a lot of pro players who are incredible on one agent like Jet and then look super awkward when asked to play something else. I already sort of do this as part of my warm up before playing ranked. I like to hop into a custom game and refresh or find new lineups or setups for agents like Viper or Killjoy. So applying the same sort of practice to stuff like Raze, Neon, and Jet makes a lot of sense to me. Think about it like this. Your brain has a certain certain amount of processing power, and if you're playing an agent that requires you to think a lot about how to throw utility or do movement combos, it's taking away a lot of your attention from reading the game, aiming your gun, or communicating. The more comfortable you are on an agent, the more you can focus on the fun parts of the game, like shooting. Point number two is to play with your teammates. Pairing up with initiators and asking them to set you up with some utility and breaking utility for you will only make your life easier. The game has lots of tools to get you an advantage, and the enemy has lots of utility to push you off. Having a duo helps. I see so many duelists with the mentality that they have to do everything themselves. Arena flashes the first corner, takes the corner, flashes the second corner, runs in while trying to pull out their weapon and takes fights. Not only does Reyna have no more utility to help out their team later on in the round now, but they're also playing the game on hard mode, trying to throw utility and aim at the same time. Instead, simply asking for a drone, a dart, a flash is really easy to do. Just press your mic and it makes the entire game really easy to play. Yeah, your teammates might not always do it correctly for you, but trying to play a team game like Valorant as a team is almost always going to be better than pretending everyone else in the server is an NPC. 
Point number three might be the most important point Durka makes, man advantages. If you ever get a five versus four or five versus three advantage going on, you shouldn't ever go for more kills. You hear me, duelist players? Just play with your teammates and let the opponents who are at a disadvantage try to do something. Don't make their lives easier. Again, this addresses that key mentality shift. Playing duelist isn't about having the most kills all the time. Chasing extra kills is easily the number one way that rounds get lost in Valorant when the advantage team gets too aggressive to finish the round and ends up giving away a free kill or two. Remember, you already did your job of making the game easier to play by getting those first kills. Try not to make it harder again by giving the other team a chance to equalize the number of players alive. Point four is to look at what agents the enemy plays. There's no point in playing spots that are super likely to be cleared by enemy utility unless you have someone with you to break it. It's also worth it for you to break the incoming dog, dart, or drone, and then reposition it somewhere else instead of immediately re-peeking into a fight the enemy knows is coming. This is a pretty simple point from Durka to understand, and just another example of trying to make the game easier for you and your team instead of harder. Durka's fifth tip is to be everywhere. Every round you should think of where to go and where the enemy has gaps. Also expect the enemy to adapt to what you're doing. It's really easy to fall into basic play patterns in Valorant. All five go A. All five go B. Rinse and repeat. Being unpredictable is a massive way to gain advantage over the other team, and especially if you're playing with an operator, surprising the other team with your positioning can start almost every single round with a free kill for your team if you're hitting your shots. It's also really important important to remember that the other team is going to try and counter you at some point, so respect their efforts to do that and think one extra step ahead. Number six, would you rather kill an omen or a jet on the other team? Getting picks on agents with more valuable utility for the team is more important than jet diffing someone. It opens up more gaps and more spots to play for you and your team and significantly increases your chance of winning the round. This is a really interesting and more advanced point from Durka. It's super easy to to just see and shoot whoever appears on your screen first. However, if you go into a round knowing that the other team has a Sova ultimate or absolutely needs their smoke character to play the map properly, then you can massively impact the round by trying to target these players first. Just imagine how hard Valorant would be if you didn't have any smokes. Oh wait, I don't really need to imagine that, do I? Durka goes on to talk more about entering for your team and recommends finding a duo to queue with from another complementary role to really supercharge your ability to climb the ranks quickly if you can practice and plan things together. He finishes his tips by saying that getting a good warm-up routine and settling on a sensitivity and settings is really important as well. Too many players are searching for quick fixes with a new crosshair or mouse sensitivity when the real answer to their problems is just a bit more basic practice. By the way, I've got videos on both of these topics as well if you're looking for more content.